All right, so I'd like to introduce you to my chuck box. That's C-H-U-C-K, chuck box. Uh, the origin of the name probably comes from back in the pioneer days when they had chuck wagons and this was the box they used to cook in. This is my box that I take when I go car camping or if I'm base camping or as some people like to call it, glamping. Let's take a look on the inside here. All right, this is a box that I constructed. The plans for this box are on the REI website. So if you go to REI.com and look at uh, some of the plans they have, you can actually find this. I did make some small modifications to the plans that they had to fit my needs. Inside of it here, we have my kettle right here, which can be used for making coffee or just warming up hot water. It's also a percolator, so you can percolate coffee if you like. This is my big pot that I've shown you before right here. And inside of that, I have nested a smaller pot. This larger pot here is about a, uh, about a five liter pot and it has a lid. This is my small four liter pot. It's made by Solo Stove. It's nice, comes with a handy lid. It also has these handles on the side here that you can use to hold the pot. And on the other side here, it actually has uh, markings that you can see from the inside. So while I'm pouring water in the inside, I can tell exactly how much I've put in here. And it has markings for liters and it has markings for ounces. In the back over here, I have my frying pan. This is the cast iron frying pan that I showed you before. This little device right here is a propane stove, which is very similar to a, uh, a, uh, an MSR wind burner or a uh, zip boil uh, stove. And what it does is it pretty much works the same. It's got the same burner on the inside that uh, the other products have. And this one runs on an actual propane bottle instead of a butane bottle. Very, very handy to have. And next up, I have some of my cooking cleanup gear right here. So I like to keep things in Ziploc bags because when it's in here and you're exposed to different temperatures, things expand and contract. This is just some hand soap that I keep here. Bleach, very, very handy when you're out because you can use it as a, a disinfectant for uh, these things here, you can use it to wipe things down and it pretty much kills any type of bacteria that may be on your uh, stuff there. Of course, I keep some hand sanitizer. And this is just some dishwashing soap right here. And as you can see, it's in the bag and it's actually a little bit of it spilt on there. That's why I keep it in these uh, Ziploc bags. And I have a little doohickey here to wipe off dishes to clean with. This is just a little drying cloth right here. You can use to uh, dry your hands or dry your uh, dishes off when you're done cleaning them, with it, cleaning them up. Now inside of here, I've got some other handy items here. First one, I've got some bowls. Simply used to uh, eat meals with. And I like to keep a lot of these little Ziploc pouches right here, or Ziploc uh, containers, because what you can do is as you're cooking things, this gives you a place to store them uh, to keep them warm while you're waiting for the rest of your meal to finish. These are just uh, measuring cups, and these have the uh, measuring cups on the side, anywhere from a full cup, to half a cup, quarter cup, and it's also got some little spoon measurements on the bottom here for half a teaspoon, full teaspoon, tablespoon, that type of thing. I keep a few spare Ziploc bags in here. These are the gallon bags, and then I keep a couple of these sandwich bags in here, just handy for a lot of things. This right here is a tablecloth, which you can, if you're at a place and you have a table, uh, picnic table, you can just put it on there. This is a scraper for the cast iron when you're cleaning it up. And these are my tubs right here I use for washing dishes. One tub will have hot soapy water in it. The next tub will have rinse water in it, hot rinse water. And then the third tub will have cold water with some bleach. That's why you carry bleach. And if you use the three tub method, your dishes will be clean and sanitized after each meal. This is a um, 
chopping block right here so you can cut things on it. And here I keep utensils. And there's a bunch of different utensils in here. These are hot hands for the winter time. I like to keep those in there. And these are just different utensils such as spatulas and knives and ladles and all those things that you want to have. I do like to keep a pair of scissors in here. And these are just some nice little Coleman multi-use scissors. Uh, they work very well. I do keep a spork in here, which is handy. And I keep a nice little spatula. This is pretty good. Over here, a couple of things. This is a drying rack. This can be laid out to dry dishes on. And these are just some handy wipes right here to wipe things off with. Over here, I keep a couple of lighters. Handy for lighting the stove if the sparker's not working. Now, one thing you want to know about these, if you get into very cold temperatures, these lighters will not work. So you'll want to bring along some matches. And for that, I have this little device here. I picked this up on Amazon, little camp out things. You actually fill it with lighter fluid and it's got a sparky here. So you can take it and if you spark it, it's supposed to light. There you go. It does light. So that's a good alternative when your lighters are too cold to light. Over here is just some tin foil to cover things up with. On the top here, I have some highly coveted Clorox disinfectant wipes for wiping everything down, keeping it clean. Paper towels. A stainless steel cup. You can find these at Walmart. They're pretty cheap. You know, they're probably five or six bucks. Um, so I would go with the, the more inexpensive ones rather than the more expensive ones. Another bowl. This is a titanium bowl. I usually take it backpacking, but it ended up in here for some reason. And a plate to eat off of. I use a lot of paper plates too. I don't always use these plastic ones because it's just less clean up. That right there is the majority of the things that I have in my box. Now I'm going to give you just a little bit of a demonstration of how I use some of these items. All right, our kitchen is now set up and ready to cook our meal. We're going to make some grilled cheese sandwiches and we're going to make some of this uh, Selects Four Cheese Risotto and we're going to do it on our stove right here. So with that, I have the ingredients. I'm not going to show you or we're not going to go through the preparation steps right here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it all together and then I'm going to show you it cooking on the actual stove with the pot for the rice and this cast iron pan for the grilled cheese. All right, now we're gonna have a nice close up here. We're ready to begin our meal. So what we'll do, we're gonna follow the directions on, and we're gonna start with the rice first, because it's gonna take the longest to do. So what it says here, we're gonna add our water. Ooh, see our pan is hot, our pot is hot already. And we're going to add our milk. One cup of milk. And we're going to add our olive oil. There we go. Those are using all the tools that we have available to us. And what it says is to let that come to a boil. Over here on the other side, this is where we're going to cook our grilled cheese. And we don't need the top for that, so we'll leave it off. Alrighty. We have our prepared sandwiches ready to go. I like to put butter on the bread itself when I, before I put it in. There's one. And there's two. And we'll get those going right there. We're going to put our top on top of that so it'll boil a little bit quicker. I like to put my butter on top of the bread as it's going here. So when I flip it over, it's ready to go. And that butter will give it a nice brown coating. on top. Okay, now let's go ahead and check the bottoms of our 
grilled cheese. There we go. And as you can see, we didn't quite have the pan on the way it's supposed to be. Notice we got a little uneven browning right here. But we'll fix that when we turn it over. And we're going to add in our rice and we're going to stir it in. And the directions are to put it on low and let it cook for about 10 minutes while stirring frequently. Our grilled cheese are about done, so what we're going to do is we're going to turn this one off. We let the residual heat inside keep that going. We're going to cover this up, keep those warm, but the heat is off. So in case you're wondering again, this is Selects Four Cheese Risotto. This is one of the great things about having these holders right here. I can pick the entire pot out without a pot holder. And we can check out our four cheese risotto. It's cooking well. And our rice has thickened up quite a bit. We're going to let this sit for just a little bit longer. I'm going to put the top on it for a few minutes. Ooh. And then we'll come back. All right. And now we have our prepared meal. We have the risotto and we have a grilled cheese sandwich. So with that, I'm going to enjoy. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please like it. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, please subscribe. So thanks a lot for watching again and see you on the trail.